Hey everybody, today's July 18th, 2020. One of the top news stories today is that U.S. Representative John Lewis from the state of Georgia has passed away at the age of 80. This man was a key figure in many civil rights movements, known particularly for his role as a figure in the Bloody Sunday events. And we're going to talk about the numerology of his passing today, but what I want to focus on to start, um, well, let's explain this from the beginning. So last week, Congresswoman Alma Adams mistakenly tweeted that Representative John Lewis passed away. Now, Lewis was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at the end of 2019, uh, an announcement he made on December 29th. So he was ill for a, quite some time and has passed away here at the age of 80. But a week ago, uh, it was being mistakenly tweeted that he had already died. So this prompted uh, user Gematria Club, and I'll talk a little bit more about this guy at the end of it. Um, he has a Twitter page with about as many followers as I have subscribers here on YouTube, a little over 12,000. And... He's been doing work in Gematria for many years, and after seeing this story, he determined that John Lewis was likely to die on July 17th or 18th. And this tweet here, which you can find, it's dated July 12th, and as far as I know, you can't edit a tweet, so we know that this is what he had posted last week, five days before the actual passing of John Lewis. And the fact that he said 17th or 18th is very interesting because in many of my videos I talk about how both dates are significant, both the date that they passed away and the date that the story made headlines, which is what we're seeing today. So very interesting that he was able to look at this and call the date ahead of time. And uh, this to me is much more impressive than any other sports predictions that he or pretty much anyone else has made. Um, and yeah, this is the type of thing that I think will wake people up to Gematria. And if you read the comments on this tweet, you know you, you see a lot of people saying, whoa, you know, time to take Gematria seriously or something to that effect. And it's unfortunate that it took someone making such an accurate prediction to do it, but, you know, progress is the name of the game and it's good to see people coming along. Now, he didn't really elaborate on why he made this prediction. He, he mentioned a number of 117s here. And... Again, I'm not sure exactly how he arrived at the date, but through some reverse engineering, we can come to some conclusions and talk about why this date is significant. What I also want to mention is how this is related to the death of Elijah Cummings. And I made a post on the death of Elijah Cummings, who was another U.S. representative who passed away last year. I'm actually going to put a link to this post in the description down uh, below this video. And this post, I thought, was one of the most interesting ones I made in all of 2019. And what I had determined in that post is that it was related to the Great Conjunction, which occurs on December 21st later this year. And real quick, let's glance at the numerology of this man's passing first. Elijah Cummings died on October 17th last year, the date written 10-17. Of course, 1017 represents 117 in numerology since the zeros are dropped. Notice how the name Elijah equals 117 in reverse gematria. So does the name Cummings, 117. And if we go to the alphabetic order with triangular numbers, whoa, 787 stands out. I believe he died 787 days after the Great American Eclipse. He did. Wow, so that's interesting, but when you write out Elijah Cummings, it sums to 1017, just like the date he passed away. And we'll, we'll talk a lot about this first Great American Eclipse and how significant it was. The first one back in 2017 there. Elijah Cummings represented Maryland's 7th District, which sums to 
1017 or 1170, I should say, in Sumerian gematria. Now, as far as how I determined that this was related to the Great Conjunction, first let's take Elijah Cummings' full name gematria. And notice how in reduction this sums to 93. He was in the 7th district, 7th equals 93. Well, the planet Saturn equals 93, also 69 in reverse. And notice how 7th district equals 69 and 93, just like Saturn. And then we find that Elijah Cummings died six, or 93 days before his 69th birthday. So these are all Saturn numbers, and Saturn is, of course, one of two planets in the Great Conjunction the other one being Jupiter, the two largest planets in our solar system. Now, Jupiter equals 99, 36, and 45. These numbers are found in both Elijah and Cummings. So this man's name having matching gematria with both Saturn and Jupiter. And if you measure from his death to the great conjunction of 2020, you get 431 days. Well, using prime numbers, Elijah Cummings equals 431. This is also 14 months and four days, which is the ordinal gematria of Elijah Cummings. And I'll be damned, how about square numbers? 1890, just like the ordinal gematria of great conjunction. So the fact that this man died in such perfect alignment with the Great Conjunction is really mind-blowing. Now let's talk about how these numbers relate to Congressman John Robert Lewis. And in this prime number cipher, which you just peeked at, notice how this man's name equals 1017, just like the date that Elijah Cummings passed away. And I will notice a, uh, I would say, a rather strong similarity in appearance between John Lewis and Elijah Cummings. I guess not that strong, but this is something I pointed out in previous posts. Uh, not that long ago, I did a video on the Bubba Wallace incident. And, you know, with NASCAR and the noose found in his garage... And uh, I can't find my posts on Yahoo, of course. Well, anyway, I pointed out in that video how Jesse Smollett and Bubba Wallace appeared to look alike. And then we find that the noose incident from Bubba Wallace happened on Jesse Smollett's 38th birthday. The name Jesse equals 38 and 83. So it seems like we're going through these strange twin rituals in the news. And it all started with the death of George Floyd, whose best friend was apparently Stephen Jackson, a former NBA player who called George Floyd his twin. And that was in Minnesota, which is the home of the twins. So anyway, we get this 1017 in prime numbers. Not only that, but we talked about how Elijah and Cummings both sums to 117. Well, notice how Congressman John Lewis in both single reduction ciphers, sums to 117. So if you measure from the birthdays of Elijah Cummings to John Lewis's birthday, you get 10 years and 331 days. And in numerology, this represents the number 1331. Now, I would say I mentioned this number in roughly half my videos, 1331, this ultimate total eclipse number, and it all traces back to the 1331 total solar eclipse, which occurred on November 30th, the only date that sums to 1331 in the same Jewish cipher. Well, here in the United States of America, we're currently in this period of time between the two great American total solar eclipses, which create an X over the middle of the nation. 
The phrase 20 eclipses equals 1331. Just like 1331 eclipse, that eclipse was on November 30th. The only total solar eclipse whose path of totality never touches a major body of water. And 1331 can be created by a merging of 133, which equals 1331, and 333. I'm sorry, 331. I get, get those mixed up. So anyway, 10 years and 331 days separate the birthdays of these two men. Now, if we measure from the most recent total solar eclipse, which is highlighted on the left side of your screen, that eclipse occurred on July 2nd of last year. Measuring from that total solar eclipse to the death of John Lewis is one year and 15 days. Notice how John Lewis equals 115 in ordinal. This is the value of killing in multiple ciphers, Jewish and reverse. 115 also the value of total eclipse with all uh, reduction exceptions. So we talked about how the death of Elijah Cummings was connected to the Great Conjunction, which equals 243 and 90. Notice how Congressman John Lewis has these same numbers, 243 and 90. And if you read up on John Lewis, you find, you know, he was a key right, uh, figure of the civil rights movement. And this makes it pretty interesting that he dies on a date with 64 numerology. Because in reduction, civil rights equals 64. And the year 64 is when the Civil Rights Act was passed. So John Lewis had a prominent role in the Selma to Montgomery marches, a date which later became known as Bloody Sunday. As you can see, this march was led by John Lewis. Well, in Gematria, Bloody Sunday equals 157. And if you measure from the death of John Lewis to this year's Great Conjunction, it's 157 days. Remember, Great Conjunction is very rare, only occurring once about every 20 years. Notice how United States also equals seven, uh, 157. And this event is related to the United States Congress. United States Congress equals 257. And I just made another connection with this, which I'll try to get to. 257 is an important number. Total solar eclipse 257. Also blood sacrifice 257. Now, Elijah Cummings died two years and 57 days after the first great American eclipse. Well, 257 is a prime number. That would be the 55th prime number. John Lewis died a span of five months and five days before the Great Conjunction. Notice how July 17 sums to 177 using the alphabetic order. And this is the date that's written 17 slash 7 in most parts of the world. The word representative also equals 177. So does 117th U.S. Congress, 177. And on the date 17 7, a representative from the 117th U.S. Congress passes away. And that was a detail I kind of overlooked early on in this post. I mentioned all the 117s, and currently we're in the time of the 117th U.S. Congress. Now, another interesting thing about the date July 17th 
if you take 7 times 17, you get 119. And notice how United States Congress equals 1109, like the number 119. Now, these two symbolic twins seem related in more ways than just these, uh, these little alignments. Elijah Cummings was born on January 18th. This means that John Lewis died 181 days after his birthday, and January 18th can also be written 18-1. Now, if you measure from John Lewis's date of birth to the date that Elijah Cummings died, a couple of interesting numbers here. First of all, Cummings' death was on the 290th day of the year. And notice how old John Lewis was. You get a 290 and a 93. Well, as I pointed out, Cummings' full name equals 93. This was all related to Saturn. This is also a span of 239 days after his birthday, and the name John Robert Lewis, 239 in Jewish gematria. Two hundred and thirty nine is the fifty second prime number. shown here on the left side of your screen, 239 directly related to 52. Well, John Lewis was born on the 52nd day of the year. And notice the date of the 21st of February, 21 slash 2. John Robert Lewis equals 21, 2 in the reverse alphabetic order. What I also found interesting is that when he was first diagnosed with cancer, this article was published on 1229 of 2019. Notice how this diagnosis was two months and 12 days after Elijah Cummings died. 212. Syncing up with his 212 birthday and his reverse gematria. And if you measure from that diagnosis to the date he died, you get 201 days. Elijah Eugene Cummings equals 201 ordinal. So these men are linked through these layers of numbers. It's like this deep web. It's so interesting. But what also stands out about this 212 is the Twitter account who pre accurately predicted his date of death Gematria Club equals 212. <laughs> and, you know, I got nothing bad to say about Gematria Club. He offered me, like, a, a free uh, year membership or something to look at his decodes and everything. And, you know, the guy does pretty good work. He's accurately predicted um, some championships in the past. And, you know, honestly, he charges a lot of money and... That's fine if people want to find a way to make livings off of Gematria. Can't say anything bad about that. I might look to do that one day as well. Um, I personally think that, you know, observing it yourself and, um, you know, looking at all the videos that are available between whether it's me or, or Zach or Dan Barrent or Chigozi, whoever's doing the work out there, you know, there's a lot of free information out there and, and picking up on these patterns becomes second nature after time. So, you know, and I bring this up because... Um, someone who was a contributor to my Discord uh, within the past year had a really bad day with sports betting. Lost several thousand dollars, I think, over the cor a short period of time. And ultimately, he committed suicide. And to me, that was just one of the most awful things I heard because in my life, gematria, numerology, taking this language of letters and numbers, turning it around onto my own life, and discovering the synchronicities that started to pile up afterwards and then noticing synchronicities from earlier in my life and significant dates that brought me true spiritual peace and understanding 
and really brought me out of a funk that I was in, you know, as recently as 2016. And when I share gematria, I ultimately want people to see that side of this language, not just the bad side, you know, but the good side as well. And, you know, we have to be careful with this because, you know, with the recent legalization of sports gambling, and we've seen what coronavirus has done to the economy, it's destroyed much of the lower class. And you're going to see a growing number of people who turn to things like sports betting, hoping that it can give them some sort of financial freedom. And understand, there's no reason that we should trust the athletes and officials that are in these major sports leagues. You know, we have every reason to believe that their eyes are on the sports books and they're going to change the outcomes if too much money is on one side. So while it's definitely possible to make money with gematria at sports betting and, you know, people are doing it, I would just advise people continuously to take caution and be careful with what they're doing. You know, I went to Las Vegas earlier this year and um, I got in a little discord with several sports decoders and I thought I, I discovered what I thought were pretty amazing rituals that that we were looking at. Um, I shouldn't say rituals, but alignments or synchronicities that I was finding. And I showed these to some of the sports betters, and they're like, "Yeah, these are slam dunks." So I went ahead and put money on it, and I ended up losing a bunch of cash. So, you know, all I'm saying is that while the sports betters are picking up on patterns, and some of that is very true, um, not all of it is true. So. You know, as good as Gematria Club has been, and I'm certain that if you take all his bets, you'd ultimately win a little bit. He's made wrong predictions too, just like, you know, we've all made missteps with numerology in the past. You know, last month, I thought, uh, I saw coding for what looked to be a Trump assassination. And honestly, as the event grew nearer, and we saw other things happening, like the death of JFK's sister, it became clear to me that that's not what was going to happen, but we were still picking up on some pattern. And I think the same thing is happening with a lot of the sports betting, where, you know, we're, we're picking up on something, we're just not always sure what it is. So, I just feel like I wouldn't be doing my full responsibility if I didn't bring up that side of it, too. So, you know, just spend your money wisely, and, uh, you know, don't be dumb about it, that's all. So, I, I, I do agree that I think, you know, ultimately this should be free, this information and knowledge should be free to people. You know, if someone wants to put a lot of work in and wants to be paid for their efforts, well, that's their decision, and the economy will decide whether or not that's the right decision. You know, I'm a capitalist in that sense. I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, but, you know, ultimately what I hope is that this knowledge that we are accruing now as a society, as a mass, you know, what we're looking at was, you know, literally a decade ago, was completely hidden from the public consciousness. And now we're starting to accrue this knowledge ourselves so that we can kind of snap out of this enslavement society we've been brought up in. And ultimately what I want is for this knowledge to help the whole of humanity. Um, it's not necessarily for some of us to get ahead. Um, if you're taking that route, you know, you might make some money, but what are you gaining spiritually from it? Um, to me, it's it's about the collective and, you know, it, this knowledge, you know, shout out to Alex in the chat who's done a lot of work putting together Zach's Discord and sharing our work. Um, this, this work literally can save lives. I've had emails from people and recently I even met someone who told me that numerology, gematria, making sense of what we're seeing in the media, this stuff literally saved their lives. They were depressed. They were, they were, uh... You know, they, they felt a lack of guidance. They were scared. And now when you come into this light and see that there's a design behind it, it brings peace to you. And that's that's the greatest thing, and that's what I want everyone to gain from this. So the idea that some people are um, literally losing their lives to something like sports gambling, it's, it's such a, a misdirection. It's, it's so misguided that, um, you know, like I said, I, I feel like it wouldn't be doing proper justice if I didn't bring that up, so... Um, but all right, I'll get off the soapbox, wrap this video up, probably been long enough. So um, thanks to everybody for jumping in. And hopefully this is another reason for people to share Gematria and help see the light, you know, and, and what we truly are, which is beings connected to the greater consciousness, to this quantum mother that is Earth, so to speak.
I don't know. I don't ask everyone to share all my analogies. All right, guys. Peace, love, God bless, and we'll talk to you next time. Enjoy your weekend. Adios.